everybody, we're at Star East 2025 in Orlando, Florida, and I'm with my good friend, Senor Performo. Hola, amigo. Hola, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Leandro Melendez. And he has, you're basically a host here. You're running around the floors all day, interviewing people, your camera's going. So you get to see a lot of stuff. What are the conversations being led by? What's the most common topic? What are, what are people talking about here? I kind of identify like a common topic. And yeah, this time like crazy AI. I mean, it's very... Even more so than before? Way more, way, way more. About a year ago, I would say it's when you were starting to feel like it was crawling up and it was exploding. No, no, no. Right now, it's kind of like crazy. We're in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I thought last year. So let's see what happens next year. And I think something that is brewing extra hard right now is all the interconnectivity with the MCPs and the agents. And everybody is starting to pull up, pull up some experiments I remember a year ago, Jason Arbon was like, uh, yeah, this cursor thing, it's really cool. You should check it. It feels like this year now everybody checked them and it's, it's quite awesome what you can do. And dress. What is the tone though? Is it, I got to be the first to fr- try this out because I don't want to be left behind. Is it excitement about it? Because it seems like it's going to be amazing. Is it skeptical? Is it cynical? Is it, oh, it's going to take my job. I mean, what is the tone? So I see two two tones. Uh, many of the presenters and some of the attendees, most of the presenters, have already played with uh, things like Cursor and AI. They are really excited. They are already seeing the potential. All of us have heard the stories, and me personally as well, like things that used to take you five days, now it's four hours, one hour, something like that. And the people that have experienced that are like mind blown and overexcited, like, you just discovered CrossFit and you cannot shut up about it, right? <laughs> right. Where you have the ones on the other side that have not yet experienced it, they are a little bit like, mm, I don't know, that thing is kind of... Because on that side, I feel the ones used to the no-code tools. Cursor, of course, is cool, codeful and could break some of those gaps, uh, fill them up. But uh, let's see. I have a feeling that now it's going to be after this conference and with uh, how many others are presenting, it's going to be even more people super excited. Again, I I really stick to the CrossFit analogy. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And, you know, I go to a lot of conferences too. I talk to a lot of people. And here's the thing I see. It's like you have the leaders of this on the cutting edge, the speakers. I've done all this already and it's going to be great and it's what to expect. But then you have people in the real world at real jobs and some of these companies are very far behind. And I know in the past, like uh, when automation was, how, fa- how fast can we automate? When we we move to DevOps, continuous this, continuous that. There's always those laggards that are kind of, they, they wait and see those. It's just because the companies move slower. But now it seems like everything has to move faster. For example, when the MCP, everything was MCP, and it seems like within two days, everybody has it, everybody does it. And the, and the speed is getting even faster. I remember um, ChatGPT comes up in November 22, was it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, six months later, everybody was getting on it and things. Now, new plugin, the Ghibli Studio one, and now everybody is on the Ghibli yeah. um, drawing style. And with MCP, it was similar. And I'm starting to listening at thing, hearing things now that are like, no, MCP is the thing of the past. Now it's this new thing. And I'm like, really? Give us some time to catch up. Yeah, give us at least 48 hours <laughs> to check something out because like we had a, a weekend. At the same time, you still, I mean, there are companies who just cannot move that fast. Do you think GE is going to be able to just turn around and start using all this stuff? To, now, Pockets, yes, but that's a, you know, 100 plus year old company. They can't just turn on a dime and say, well, everything's going to be this, right? So I'm starting to think with stuff like this, it's always going to start with the startups, the very small companies. But then as it starts to scale, that's when you're going to go from the hype of all of this, the hype cycle, as Gartner calls it, to trough of disillusionment. We didn't do everything we thought it was going to do. And then all of a sudden, well, it does this well. Let's do it. Let's do it for what it's good for. I don't know that we're there yet. I still think we're still in this big hype thing. Do you agree? It depends on what area of AI, because um, uh, what you were saying with GEG has to keep up in so many other things before, so not AI. Uh, but 
like cursor and sending things to ChatGPT and the security concerns, many organizations will totally hit the brakes there. Uh, but how are you hitting the brakes with all the copilot integrations with Word and Excel? And many of us are already using it. It's behind the hype. I've seen almost everybody that has Microsoft Office is already using AI. Right. Sorry. To Gmail? type better emails to people so that they don't flame them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to be nice. <laughs> Every time that you open uh, your iPhone or uh, Google and Android uh, cell phone, it's like, uh, do you want me to help you on th that horrible thing that you just wrote? <laughs> sure, why not? Now, do you want me to read you like um, a shortened version of that sh super long email, uh, WhatsApp messages, voice messages, how I hate those. Uh, yeah, I'll give you like a short and written, yeah, thank you, please. Everybody's using them and even some organizations. Now, on the actual tools that are oriented, I think that there's going to be an interesting transition. I hate to use the term guardrails, but mm -hmm. I think in some sense you do sort of need that to protect yourself because MCP comes out. They already found vulnerabilities in it, that people were taking that and abusing it and getting information they shouldn't have been getting from it already. So that's why we always say in the testing world, we don't really believe that developers by nature, unless they've been trained to do this, think about security and think about performance and think about it. They think about functionality first. They're trying to get code written so it will do something. Then they learn about all these things that it has to do to bring it. But I, I, you have to have that if you're going to have some type of safety for using these products, right? I am going to quote uh, Jurassic Park a little bit. You're standing on the shoulders of giants and you're just seeing if you can do it, how far you can push it. But you didn't stop to wonder if you should. That's right. That's correct. That's exactly right. You don't, you don't check the risk, what uh, can be happening, and you don't want the giant uh, Tyrannosaurus AI to eat you, right? And that can get out of control pretty easy, especially with NCPs. I've seen people connecting it at magnitudes that I'm like, ooh, should you be connecting it there? Are you sure? Okay, you already did it. <laughs> so a lot of people forget that testing is one little segment of overall quality. And I know we, we, we abuse the term quality assurance. Maybe it's quality control or whatever you call it. But part of that is reducing risk. We are in the risk reduction part of the business. And so that is why testers sometimes seems because they come from a quality background, they're always seen as, oh, you're just trying to hold up that. No, we're just trying to keep you from destroying yourself. When somebody has to play that role because bad things have happened in the past when you didn't have that. So I think we just need to be kind of reminded of that because we all want to jump in and use this stuff and get excited about it and do it. But we just have to keep in mind that there, anything that can be used for the really cool, exciting stuff can also be used for really bad purposes. And that's why we have white hat hackers and penetration testing and security testing. It's a whole different thing. But I just think that's important to remember. We're just children in the playground. And what will happen if we jump from the five foot tall thing? They're like, <laughs> careful, kid. Uh, that could be, it's going to be fun. Yeah, but also you can break your neck or have some situations. So. It's like I the developers. Totally you QA people are just trying to keep us from having all this fun in the playground. <laughs> yeah. We're just keep. We're just not wanting to give Dennis the Menace a machine gun and say go play in the yard. That would be bad. Yeah. Right. So, anyway, thank you so much for no, talking no. to me. What What else you got going on in your life? What do you want to share with people? Oh What's going boy, on with you. So many things. So uh, right now, as many know, I'm on my own and I am in the process of moving. Uh, not only places, but countries. Uh, you're going to see me uh, locating to Germany soon. Wow. And still jumping a lot around conferences, events, and helping and bringing some more noise, similar to my amigo Scott, <laughs> and to be uh, a speaker for whatever is interesting, relevant, performance, and important. I can tell you a secret that not everybody's supposed to know, but wherever he goes, he brings candy with him. So you have to ask him for candy if you see him now. So you have to start bringing a bunch more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What did you think? I, I loved it. I'd never had anything like it, and I, I want some more. I'm going to get with you. Oh, yeah. We're going to get some. Thanks so much. <laughs> Amigo, thank you. It was a pleasure.